In this short presentation, I will discuss the evidence of using prolonged beta-lactam antibiotic infusion in the ICU for the treatment of sepsis, and will review the latest literature on this topic as of July 2023. This presentation is prepared by Dr. Mazin Kerala, who is an infectious disease and critical care consultant and a clinical associate professor at the University of North Dakota in Fargo, and I am an AI presenter. Let's start by reviewing the pharmacodynamics of antibiotics. Beta-lactam antibiotics demonstrate time-dependent killing, meaning that they are most effective when their serum concentration is above the target pathogen's minimum inhibitory concentration. Conversely, decreases in serum concentrations below the minimum inhibitory concentration are associated with less bacterial killing and may facilitate the development of antibiotic resistance. Standard intermittent infusions, given over 30 to 60 minutes, create peaks and valleys in drug concentrations, whereas prolonged infusions, either extended dosing over 2 to 4 hours or continuous administration, can provide more consistent serum levels above the target pathogen's minimum inhibitory concentration. Prolonged infusions are particularly attractive when treating patients infected with gram-negative organisms that have higher minimum inhibitory concentrations within the susceptible range, and when treating critically ill patients, in whom pharmacokinetics are often variable due to alterations in drug clearance, volume of distribution, fluid balance, and protein binding. The question is, does prolonged infusion of beta-lactam antibiotic result in better patients' outcomes? Let's review the available literature. The BLING-2 trial was the largest trial up to 2015 that was conducted in 25 intensive care units across Australia and New Zealand and included 432 patients with severe sepsis. The investigators found that the continuous infusion of beta-lactam antibiotics did not result in significant clinical improvement compared to intermittent beta-lactam antibiotic infusion. There was no difference in ICU-free days, 90-day survival, clinical cure rate, organ failure-free days, or duration of bacteremia between the two treatment groups. A systematic review and meta-analysis aimed to evaluate the effectiveness of prolonged versus short-term infusion of antipseudomonal beta-lactams in sepsis patients. The study included 22 randomized controlled trials involving 1876 patients and was published in 2017. Various beta-lactams were studied, including carbapenems, penicillins, and cephalosporins, in patients of differing ages, sepsis severity, and renal function. The meta-analysis found that prolonged infusion was associated with 30% lower all-cause mortality than short-term infusion, with high-quality evidence and no observed heterogeneity or publication bias. A separate systematic review and meta-analysis was published in 2018 and synthesized data from 3,401 critically ill patients across 18 retrospective and prospective studies. The investigators found a correlation between prolonged infusion of piperacillin with a reduced risk of mortality by 31%. Crucially, these two systematic reviews and meta-analyses found no indications of increased toxicity or other adverse effects resulting from extended infusions. The Surviving Sepsis Campaign introduced a cautious recommendation for the extended infusion of beta-lactam antibiotics in its 2021 updated guidelines. This recommendation, which suggests administering an initial loading dose to swiftly achieve effective drug concentrations, prefers extended infusion over the traditional intermittent administration. The endorsement is classified as weak, with its basis grounded on evidence deemed to be of moderate quality. The MERCY trial is a multinational, double-blind randomized controlled trial that investigated the efficacy of continuous versus intermittent administration of meropenem in 607 septic ICU patients. The respiratory tract was the most common infection site, and almost 70% of patients had identifiable gram-negative pathogens, including Klebsiella and Pseudomonas species. There was no significant differences in 28-day all-cause mortality and emergence of pandrug-resistant or extensively drug-resistant bacteria between the two groups. Similarly, 90-day mortality and emergence of drug-resistant bacteria were not different between the two groups. The ongoing BLING-3 trial, 
with its larger sample size of 7,000 patients and inclusion of piperacillin-tazobactam and meropenem, aims to provide more conclusive evidence on 90-day all-cause mortality in critically ill patients with sepsis. Recruitment is completed and results are anticipated soon. In conclusion, despite the negative results of the MERSI trial, the current inclination towards prolonged dosing of beta-lactam antibiotics may still endure in clinical guidelines and practice. This is due to the potential benefits and lack of harm associated with this approach, as well as the anticipation of the forthcoming results from the Bling 3 trial. Thank you for watching.